everyone. Welcome, Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hey. welcome. Welcome to the second Hello. episode of the Cello Block, Block Party. Block We're Party. so glad you made it. And yeah, my name is Beverly. I'm from the Cello Foundation. So glad you're here. And I'm joined with my friend and colleague, Lyle. Lyle, what's up, bro? Man, I'm just chilling. Woman, I'm just chilling. You know? <laughs> It's been a good day. Uh, it's a good celebration of Earth Day and yeah. Cell's three-year main net birthday, which is tomorrow. So happy birthday, Cello. Shout happy out. Claps up. Um, I decided to throw a little party in celebration. Okay. Um, and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling myself and I'm enjoying the clouds of the drink. How okay. are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Real quick, I don't necessarily see anyone at your party. Yeah, so everyone just decided to tune into the stream, and so they're not coming. Gotcha. Okay. I'm disappointed, but it's fine. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Next so it's virtual. Community. Next yes. time. Yes. <laughs> Next time. Well, you have a beautiful backyard. I love what you've done with the place. It's. Thank you. I appreciate it. What's what's, what's going on in here? Where are you? Is what I. Oh, oh yeah. So I don't know if I told you, Lyle, but I bought a little private island for okay, myself. All right. Okay. Sometime last year, a little gift to myself, and. Uh, yeah, so I just decided to do a little on location shoot for a solo block party. Uh, you know, just check on my property, see how it's doing, and um, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I hope I get an invite. You know, next time, everyone, the whole solo community, we're gonna party. Oh in yes, Island. yes. Yeah. You All right. definitely, you're invited. Consider this your official invite. As a matter of fact, I just had a landing strip installed um, on the. Uh, north side of the island so uh, yeah it was this whole thing you had to take a ferry before but now you know you can just fly straight in direct flights so i mean welcome. i'll probably just decide to swim in so you know yeah no swimming i also have a dock a brand okay. new dock so, <laughs> Good welcome regardless thank you, thank you i appreciate that well last time you know we saw each other was in january at the last cvp right. so much has happened couple of launches, a very big brand refresh, and now we're at the tail end of Ultra Green Week, our climate activation week. And uh, yeah. I guess, Beverly, what 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 was your favorite part of this week in celebration of Earth Day? Yeah, I guess my favorite part of this week would probably be the day three activation with Toucan. Um, so that was the Carbon, NCT Carbon Retirement Day a uh, really cool action. Uh, yeah, just in, really enjoyed that that one. Any particular reason why? Um, well, you know, I just really thought the video was done very, very well. I don't know how they did it, but it was just superb. The editing, the voice acting was, was just really top level. So, Shout yeah. Out to whoever did that. The, you did a great Shout job. out to whoever did that. Yeah. They did a great job. So. <laughs> Um, what about you? What was your favorite part about Ultra Green Week? My favorite part has not started yet. I'm most excited okay. about uh, a little announcement tomorrow for all the builders out there. And so we'll see. We'll see how uh, everyone reacts. Uh, well, I hope you can hack it. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I love to see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get the ball rolling. So all for right. everyone, the agenda today is couple of announcements from the two of us. You'll hear from Merrick and Renee, and then we'll do a very cool climate roundtable led by Brandy featuring Thallow, Sylvie, Plastics, and Wheelcoin. And we'll have a nice special message um, at the end from Columbia of NASA. So without further ado, Beverly, you want to get it started? Yeah, so uh, first announcement real quick is uh, the Cello Prosper. So this is our brand new newsletter for uh, the community. Uh, it's a way for you to get uh, and stay updated on Cello Ecosystem News. So feel free to click the link below in the description to subscribe. And yeah, and just stay connected to what's happening at Cello. Uh, Lyle, anything on your end? Yeah, I guess it's newsletter galore, right? Uh, yeah. But this one's for the builders. Uh, Subscribe to the Dev Desk. We're starting a new newsletter for uh, builders in Web 2 who want to come in and the ones who are already here in Web 3. You'll get developer resources and all the activations, um, IRL activations that we'll be at this year. 
first edition is coming out soon and do the same thing drop down below to look for the link and yeah great well that was fast uh those are our updates for now um and now we're up to our founder portion of the call very excited to have renee and merrick offer some special remarks for the community so take a look hello solo community hello solorians Happy early Earth Day. Um, excited to be here at the block party. Hope everyone has been having a wonderful week. Um, personally, uh, one of the highlights was to see uh, Ultra Green Money be announced. I think that's going to be something that really um, will have such a big impact in, in the years to come. And um, yeah, I can't I can wait uh, for it to go live and um, really become a much bigger movement. And uh, yeah, also big shout out and congrats to all the partners involved, all the daily activations. Uh, it's just been fun seeing all the, the flurry of activity on, on Twitter and, and follow along. Um, I want to touch on, on two other things real quick. Um, I was just in, in Kenya and we hosted our first cello local in Nairobi. It was a packed house of builders, community members, and um, yeah, just really great to see that kind of um, level of activity and engagement um, even in you know still being in this in this bear market but um, one thing I've realized is that uh, you know this is uh, not just the case in, in Kenya but I think in our community more um, you know everywhere globally um, by focusing on real world use cases we also are um, bear market resistant and you know we we are seeing applications built on Celo grow usage day over day, week over week, months over months, and it's because it's providing real utility to people. And so, yeah, I, I think big shout out to people building um, despite uh, the you know external factors, which definitely could be could be better, um, but not giving up on on the mission and 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 building for for the communities out there. The other thing, and this is kind of related, um, I think as a result of that, uh, we've just had um, the most active uh, months ever in terms of uh, active addresses, uh, March, and that uh, even surpassing the bull market uh, heights. And I think that really is a testament of, um, of, of that focus. And so excited to see that continue in the months to come. I think a lot of Applications are still launching. There's uh, a lot of growth in, ex in the existing applications. So um, really fantastic um, to, to see that. And I'm, um, yeah, just, you know, want to say this again. It's been three years since the launch of, of the Cello network. And I think if I, um, if you had asked me three years ago what the, the world would look like, um, <laughs> you know, today, I couldn't have predicted it. Um, I'm constantly humbled by the amazing things that are being built um, in the Cello community. And yeah, I'm, I'm just feeling super happy to, to build alongside all of you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I guess hello, Celorians, as we're now calling ourselves. Um, it's so good to be here uh, for the special edition block party. Tomorrow, as many of you know, uh, it is um, the Cello Network's third birthday, uh, so happy birthday, Cello! But one second, I just realized I don't have my signature Snapchat balloons. One second. Ah, much better. Um, happy birthday again, Cello! Um, what a what a great milestone. Um, three three freaking years. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess you can say you're officially out of your terrible twos now, uh, which is exciting. Um, and some of you may have noticed uh, I uh, changed quickly into my uh, balloon suit to match my favorite uh, Snapchat snap camera uh, filter and a pro tip if you're trying to replicate this look uh, do not go to Amazon and search for birthday suit uh, like I did initially um, it will not uh, yield the desired uh, result <laughs> um, 
but but yeah you know we we've started celebrating um you know cello's birthday i would say already at the beginning of the week um for those of you uh, following you you would have seen that we we launched uh the week with um ultra green week as we're calling it monday we we announced ultra green money which is uh, a proposal to to make cello uh, deflationary but also to uh, have a portion of transaction fees go towards uh, offsetting uh, carbon emissions. Um, so this is kind of Cello's green take on ultrasound money. Uh, pretty exciting. Um, if if you haven't heard about it, definitely check it out. And, and I would encourage you to, to go to ultragreen.money uh, and uh, uh, also optionally if you want to help spread the word. Uh, consider adding a bat and a tree emoji to your Twitter display name and uh, and then activating on, on that website. These types of milestones are always a really great time for, for reflection. And I was thinking a little bit about, um, you know, the last few years and, and I kind of reread the, the Cello white paper uh, recently. And um, I got to say, it's it's really amazing to see how much of that white paper uh, we as a, as a ecosystem now have, have actually delivered on. Um, it's incredible to see, um, but you know, critically, you know, it's just the beginning. Um, you know, I think we're we're really just getting started. Um, you know, and you know, a lot of folks are building. You know, bear markets are really great for building, and and a day really doesn't go by um, without me hearing of a new a new project being built uh, on Cello, and so. Um, I'm really excited to, to make this third year um, one of Cello's best. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to what um, uh, it delivers. So yeah, cheers again. Happy birthday, Cello, and really looking forward to the next year. Really great updates there. Uh, appreciate Erica's birthday soup. You know, I know everyone wanted to see that. Uh, Beverly, uh, I know you were at Cello Local in Nairobi earlier this year. Or how did it go? Yeah, um, it went really, really well. We had a great turnout from the community. We had builders, founders from Kenya. Uh, Renee was there. Um, some friends from Sanergy uh, and Katani Pay were there as well. Really great panel uh, on refi. And yeah, it was just a really good time. Really enjoyed it. Um, oh, yeah. Looking forward to the next one. That sounds like a blast. Yeah, and I don't know if you know, we've been around the world lately. We've had events in uh, Brazil, obviously Kenya, uh, Barcelona, Tokyo. So yeah, if you're listening to this, stay tuned to see where Cello might be uh, coming up next. We definitely will probably have an event close to you. So stay tuned. Can't wait. Uh, now let's get to the roundtable portion. So Brandy from DevRel at the Cell Foundation is going to speak with Haley from Thalo, Jimmo from Sylvie, Andre from Plastics, and Boyd from Willcoin. They're gonna to touch on why Earth Day is important, why we should care, and what we all can do to activate year round instead of just kind of celebrating this one day and things doing things on one day. So check it out. I'd love to just kind of kick off uh, the conversation here for this block party uh, for a quick introduction on, on your project, uh, what your role is, who you are, if you don't mind, Andre, do you want to go ahead and kick it off? Thank you very much, uh, Brandy, with great pleasure. So my name is Andre Bani Robin. I'm the founder and CEO of Plastics. I uh, founded the company uh, four years ago uh, in London. Uh, the parent company is called Nozama. And uh, Plastics is a marketplace where waste recovery projects across the world are able to uh, generate a third source of funding uh, to be able to finance the uh, recovery of additional plastic in their uh, geographical area. And they do so by creating what we call plastic recovery guarantees, uh, which essentially are the invoices that they're generating uh, in the course of their existing activities of collecting the waste and selling it to the recycler as a proof that they've recovered a certain amount and a certain type of plastic and that it has gone back into the recycling industry and not gone to landfill, nor has it gone into incineration. And companies and uh, individuals can go buy these plastic recovery guarantees on the uh, marketplace. 
And our role and aspiration is to be the world uh, reference in the verification of the uh, authenticity and the veracity of uh, these plastic recovery guarantees. That is what plastics is about. Amazing. What a wonderful uh, use case and an ch industry challenge. And you're taking it head on. Fantastic. Uh, Haley, you want to go ahead Thank and kick you. off an introduction on your side? Yeah, happy to. Well, hi, everyone. Great to, Hello. Great to be here. I feel like we should have a, a beer or something. It's a block party after all, right? <laughs> yeah, um, it's Friday always, evening. Always one step ahead. I love no, it. No, it's water. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, maybe maybe afterwards. Anyway. It's great to be here. Super excited to, to spend this time with you all and celebrate Earth Day. Um, like I said, my name is Haley. I am part of the founding team at Fallow, uh, also lead marketing for the company. And what we're doing is we are essentially uh, giving, we're, we're a climate solutions company. We are giving access to the whole carbon market. And so we do that in two ways. One is through a platform where businesses and individuals can buy, sell, and trade, and retire high-quality carbon credits on the blockchain. And the second way is through APIs that let businesses incorporate carbon credits and carbon offsetting directly into their products and services. So we are a fast-growing company. We're based out of London, though, as you can tell, I have an American accent, so <laughs> I'm a, a bit of a transplant. Um, but we're really focused on, on, uh, on empowering folks who are actually doing the projects on the ground to remove carbon or avoid carbon going into the atmosphere. So super excited to be here and, and have this chat with you all today. And maybe worth noting, um, I actually, my background is in climate change communications originally. I spent um, almost uh, nine years doing climate change communications and I love Earth Day. I think it's a great organizing tool. And I actually taught a class at UCLA when I was there that was called um, Hippies and Tree Huggers and it was all about the U.S. environmental movement in the 1960s and 70s. So um, very excited to be here. Definitely identify as a tree hugger and love Earth Day. <laughs> Wonderful. Love it. What a fantastic introduction. And the ambitious of uh, your efforts. I mean, it's clear as day here, uh, especially out for Earth Day. Love, love the move towards uh, energy uh, in a sense of uh, tree hugger. Like, what does that mean? What does a tree hugger mean? It, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Can you just share, like, what's a, what is a tree hugger? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's very simple. It's somebody who likes to be outdoors in nature and appreciates kind of all, all that the natural world does for us in terms of providing resources and providing, you know, mental health support and all of this. And, uh, and I think also recognizing the role that, that humans do play in the natural world, you know, where somebody, somebody recently said, I thought this was so smart, is that when you ask folks from the global north to think about nature, they think about a place without people, right? And when you think about, when, when you ask folks in the global south to think about nature, they think about people in nature, right? So, um, so I just think that's, that's kind of part of, the, part of the whole picture. Uh, well, I feel like I've been a tree hugger than my whole life. I love it. This call right now is fully on renewable energy uh, generated. So, yes, very, big support. And in Hawaii, it's... Tree hugger, tree hugger. I am as well. <laughs> oh, that's it. We need an official badge. Tree hugger, unite. Amazing. <laughs> so fun. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic intro. Thank you so much, Haley. Uh, Boy, do you want to go ahead and kick off the intro on your side? Sure. I mean, I think I can follow up with Haley. I've got trees in my background, so obviously I like trees. Uh, I'm a diehard mountain biker. That's not actually me, but it kind of looks like me. Maybe I have more of a belly than that than that biker does. But um, and and actually, like Haley, I've been in climate change for a very long time. Uh, I published three books. My first one was called Climate Capitalism in 2011 uh, with Hunter Lovins, who's a famous tree hugger herself out of uh, the U.S. Like Haley, I'm from the U.S., but a transplant in. Well, I don't know if I can say Haley's in Europe anymore with Brexit, but I'm in Europe. I'm in Barcelona. Um, and I'm the co-founder of a company called IMOB that built a, a product called Wheelcoin. And Wheelcoin is a, a move-to-earn app that rewards users for making greener mobility choices. So it's about gamifying your daily lifestyle and making it fun and rewarding to choose greener options and taking your car everywhere. Uh, we detect if you're on a train, a bus, a bike, a ferry, 
we can capture and track and then reward when you choose greener options. I'm doing something really cool with Cell here on, on Earth Day as well around the Ultra Green move -a Love it. Thank you so much. Uh, and welcome. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. It's good to welcome. be here. Good to see Haley again uh, and Boyd and Andrea for the first time. Big fan of, of plastics. Thank um, you. Yeah. Um, well, I'm working on Sylvie. Uh, Sylvie is a reforestation protocol, so we're working directly with trees. Uh, I recently found out that the tree hugger uh, sort of term, I think, was coined by Vandana Shiva in rural India with uh, women uh, protectors of, of the forest. They literally held on to trees uh, to sort of um, fight for them uh, and, and um, uh, to, to stop the commercial loggers. Uh, but I, of course, that term sort of embodies, I think, at a much uh, grander scale, the the, the commitment uh, towards environmental and climate solutions. So also a tree hugger. Um, but yeah, for, for Earth Day, we are launching version two of an app that we've been working for a while, um, particularly in Kenya, where our largest uh, project is. Uh, we're crossing 100,000 trees stewarded in Kenya, and we have an interesting uh, methodology uh, that leverages a tree forward. So it basically is a forward-looking commitment to a tree stewardship. Um, and then uh, I'm based in Florida. I'm originally from Mozambique, but I'm based in the Miami area. And uh, for Miami, we'll be uh, kickstarting along with all types of uh, local climate and refi partners, uh, Collabathon. Um, and my work will specifically be under the green economy pillar, but there's also a blue economy and you know renewable energy and uh, transportation and all types of uh, uh, great projects. Fantastic. What a special group of folks today. Thank you so much for joining up to share about the pastor. And it's clear, like, my goodness, uh, Tree Hugger, I had no idea about the historical reference points. J Jimmo, uh, I'm definitely going to dig into that some more. So quite inspiring. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so my name is Brandy Camacho. I'm a partner and advocate here on uh, developer relations. I focus on the engineering side, uh, integrations. I've been in industries, uh, you know, IT industry specifically since 1999. So I got to see the ebbs and flows of innovation. And what I love most about uh, Cello is the focus right, on being uh, green uh, initiatives, uh, making sure that we focus on things like uh, contributing to what ultra green means. Uh, and, it's, and it's a testament considering the fact that Cello Blockchain Mainnet uh, launched on Earth Day in 2020. So quite special. And it's right there, kind of like the Genesis block of Bitcoin, right? That, that messaging, that mission, it, it means so much and we're quite proud of it. Uh, and like you folks, so proud of what you're doing. And it's certainly impactful, I can tell, and very creative. Which We have some questions prepared for this block party of ours uh, for Ultra Green Week. Curious, who would like to take the first uh, stab at how to get folks more involved in a meaningful way for Earth Day? Like, what, what are some creative ways to, to increase participation this Earth Day? Who would like to take that one? I nominate Haley. She's a... Uh... Climate, climate communications expert, and this is a communications challenge, and, uh, you know, more female power. We need more of that. I second his, yes. his vote. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, look, I think there's a lot of things folks can do, and um, I, I think the, the key is to, to talk to folks, right? So communicate. So if you, no matter where you are on your sort of climate or sustainability or environmental journey, it's always good to have a conversation because there's lots of folks around who maybe know more than you, maybe don't know as much as you, but sharing that gets the kind of creative juices flowing and all the other actions I think stem from that initial act of, of kind of bringing up the topic, bringing up the conversation. I'll also say folks can typically, um, Use, use their finances in a way that, that, uh, that shows their values. So you can vote with your economic dollar, right? Support businesses that are, that are doing things that you, that you believe in, that are minimizing their impact on the environment, you know, donate to projects that are, that are doing great work, like some of the projects here even. Um, but I also was thinking about this in advance because I think a lot of the, the answers tend to be a little bit squishy like that. You know, have a conversation, look for, look for causes you can support. 
And I was thinking if, if I could get folks to do one thing on Earth Day, what would it be? Like what one tangible action? And I think a really good one is to figure out where the electricity that you use in your day-to-day -day life comes from. And maybe, you know, it, it varies wherever you are in the world. It may vary where you are within a city or in a rural context, but figure out where that electricity comes from and then take that step of figuring out, because knowledge is power, right? If there's a way that you can um, go for a lower carbon option in that electricity. So there are many places in the US where you, you, your utility is required to give you an option to opt into 100% renewable electricity, for instance. There may be community solar projects where you live that you can opt into. Um, or maybe there's no other option, and then it's, an, it's, a, it's a guidepost to you that maybe it's time to start talking to whoever's in charge of electricity where you're from and see if the, those types of options can become available. But I think that's a pretty tangible one because it requires a little bit of research, a little bit of self-education, and then a very specific action that's based on where you live that you can take going forward. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for uh, addressing that in a meaningful way. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, is there anything else that folks can do? do? Is, is network activity one way of uh, supporting Earth Day uh, and supporting your favorite projects? In today's digital age, it seems like that could be one of the least friction ways that folks can actually contribute uh, and find value uh, in exchanging through a network that focuses on ultra green initiatives like Cello, and your projects, of course, of course. Like, without having a community, uh, we're not able to address these challenges, which when I think of challenges, I'm wondering about the coordination around uh, climate action. And I would love, Andre, if you would uh, go ahead and speak to this challenge. What, what can we do to increase participation on this front? Uh, so to uh, follow a little bit in the footsteps of uh, Haley, of making one decision, I, I would think on Earth Day, the one decision would be to uh, only reward companies uh, with your consumption that have proven their commitment to the environment. And, and the reason is that 99% uh, of us are surviving. Uh, conservership is really a privilege of the 1% of the world population. And survival means we get up in the morning, we're exposed to the news that uh, uh, climate change and many, many other uh, trials and tribulations, uh, our hearts are wrenched, we go to work, we want to make a change, but then we start working, we sit down at the desk, uh, reports, meetings, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, coffee, lunch, reports, meetings, colleagues, uh, coffee, uh, run home, uh, prepare dinner for the, the kids, uh, organize the home, and then you're confronted with uh, exhaustion. And at least in Europe, you're in front of some waste bins of different colors, and you're supposed to make a choice as to where to put your rubbish uh, that you spend the entire week uh, separating. And you expect to believe that uh, what you're doing is actually making an impact. If you're exhausted, you will maybe do the right thing, but at the end of the day, you'll just do whatever you want because you want to go home. So at the end of the day, this is an existing scenario uh, for 99% of us. So the only power we have as consumers is to really reward companies that sell their products and services that have proven their commitment to the environment in a verifiable way. As such, uh, an Earth Day decision would be, I will only buy products and services from companies that have proven their commitment to the environment, and that can be done verifiably so. I think that as a mindset, uh, so like a New Year's re resolution, uh, as a mindset of, of, of consumption that would be most beneficial for society. So when we think about what green means, and like for me personally, it's about self-sustainability. How can we do things in this world that's going to allow for self-sustainability, -sustain both for my family, myself, and my community? Uh, and when you think about these initiatives, it's really a win-win globally. Uh, but we still have this large hurdle right now, uh, organizing and structuring uh, folks to coordinate, to participate. And so Earth Day is one way to bring it to light. But uh, Jimmo, you, you, you touched base a little on the history. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Like, what can we do maybe differently now with more focus uh, for climate change in this era of instant communications? How can we bring more awareness uh, and support uh, so folks can contribute in a larger manner? Yeah, certainly. So I agree with all the responses. Um, I, I will give definitely a biased, but hopefully a practical solution. 
you know, so there's a, a clear target of a trillion trees that, that we can uh, uh, make up for around the planet. And there's uh, around 8 billion of us. Uh, so um, that's roughly 125 trees per person, which sounds like a lot, but uh, that's about two, two trees a year for an average uh, lifespan. And so if we're all, you know, interested in perhaps gardening or having a house plant or embarking on, you know, all types of uh, very practical, often um, residential activities uh, that involve botany, why not just tweak that activity a little bit and adopt a tree or maybe try to germinate a, a tree? I, I, I called it a, a biased uh, response, but I can assure you that it's extremely rewarding and uh, very connecting to, to direct impact. So that, that is what I certainly would like to encourage for this Earth Day is um, go start your journey with stewarding trees and uh, they won't be ready for planting in a day or two, but perhaps you could germinate them this Earth Day and plant them next Earth Day and uh, you know, get, that, uh, get that discipline going. And of course, bring bring as many friends and family members along with you. It's like step step one, germinate the tree. Step two, plant the tree. Step three, a little ways down the line, hug the tree. <laughs> Absolutely. Very yeah. creative, Haley. Very creative. Uh, and there's trees in the ocean too, like coral, can be looked at as another way to uh, contribute uh to to like the ocean ocean is huge in regards to our climate as well and often overlook in regards to potential impact as a follow-up here what do you what do you feel is the largest restriction for folks to uh enter the space like what's preventing them from joining the community great question i would love everyone's thoughts on this one too you know especially if uh i mean i think everyone here has some some pretty long-term um, involvement in this space. But I think a lot of it comes down to feeling intimidated because uh, it seems like a big, um, a big educational gap between folks who are talking about the science of climate change every day and folks who are, you know, just looking at this space for the first time. And I think there's a lot of hesitation if you don't feel you have enough to say that maybe you don't step into the space and say something. So I think that's a big barrier and one that's surmountable, very surmountable. Excellent feedback. Andre, what's your thoughts? Everybody says they want to save the world, but nobody's really willing to pay for it. We have contaminated the planet. We have done all the damage. And now we are, of course, are trying to correct our course and to implement all these new technologies, these procedures, these policies. Yet we all have houses, we all have warmth, we have clean drinking water, we have beautiful educational systems, yet we want to impose the same criteria and the level of rigor in commitment to the planet to uh, 6.7 billion people who haven't gotten to the level of development that we have. So, so what do we do? Ultimately, the answer to that ask is saying, okay, well, you need money. And it really boils down to money. It's a, it's a sad fact, but it's a reality. Waste management projects, their only source of income is the physical waste that they're selling subject to market forces. Now, if you provide them with uh, Web3 based uh, um, revenue sources, they now have uh, three times the revenue capabilities to do what? To buy more machines, to pay waste pickers more money, hire more waste pickers, increase geographical recovery areas, make sure children aren't being used for waste picking, uh, create schools, have social impact. All this is money. Uh, and of course, who is supposed to be responsible for this? What's the company that are creating the products and services that consumers are buying? So connecting the 6.7 billion inhabitants uh, with Europe and North America, thanks to Web3, this is the power of what we're seeing now change. Because you have, uh, in all these countries, people talking about crypto, talking about Silo, uh, talking about Valora. Uh, they're talking about things that even people in Europe aren't talking about because they're so entrenched in these legacy systems of the fiat currencies. So this is the power of Silo. Uh, this is the power of Web3 in, in these developing uh, uh, countries. And this is the approach that we have been uh, taking uh, to try to really make impact. Well said. It's a testament to refi and the focus on on uh, the power of regenerative finance. Your use case uh, um, on the ground, uh, helping out developing uh, nations uh, elevate uh, 
uh, their community with three times the earning capacity is a testament of moving forward in this new world, utilizing token economics to incentivize folks to contribute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love that. Love that. One area that I would like to follow up on is about regulations. Are the, are the regulators doing good a good enough job when they're thinking about a framework? It almost seems to me like it might be an afterthought in regards to regenerative finance and the impact of token economics in this new world of ours in the coming next two to three years. Uh, what's your thoughts on that and suggestions for how we can actually make an impact on this front? I don't think there's a single voice of, of regulation, right? I think even regulators come in all uh, shapes and sizes, uh, but uh, not to uh, give too much of a spotlight to 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 the American side of things, but natural capital has been uh, uh, spoken at the highest level of, of government and even uh, uh, with the World Economic Forum, perhaps more on the global or European side of things. And so I, I think it would actually be a competitive advantage to regulate uh, real world assets and natural capital solutions um, and perhaps peg uh, the world's financial infrastructure around that. So I'm personally looking forward to how regulation uh, moves uh, that specific agenda forward. Well said, well said. You know, regulations uh, certainly can provide hurdles, but at the same time, they also can foster support. So what, what can we do? Like, uh, if you have the ability to advise, so, you know, next steps in this industry to secure uh, folks to innovate on this front for the next two to three years, like, would you, where, where would it? You know, there's been this sort of like, um, you know, negative reaction to so much scams and frauds from last year and the year before in crypto, and people are looking for, like, show us the use cases of crypto that's actually going to make a difference in people's lives and not just try to enrich a few people. And that's refi. So we're seeing it. I think there's more and more pressure on the crypto community to prove that there are real world use cases for crypto that will change real people's lives. And in this case also improve the planet. So I'm very bullish over the next two or three years. We're going to see a continued focus on refi bigger venture funds coming in to focus on investing in refi. Um, and, you know, we're seeing growth in, in uh, climate tech funds as well. So uh, that's, that's where I hope to see more progress rather than wait on multilateral regulation to solve the problems. Certainly many challenges, but one thing's certainly clear, that refi is utility power. And Cello has been focused on this uh, from the start. Uh, so moving forward, it's like, we're going to make uh, an impact not only on opportunity, but on the utility use case of blockchain services. What sort of real world impact have you experienced with your project? And can you give us a bit of an example to share about that impact? We're trying to reach a very broad stakeholder group for, of people who actually care and want to make a difference. But if you want to look at data, we have tracked over a million journeys from our users since we launched on October 1st. Um, we've admitted, uh, we've had our users earn 110,000 wheel coin. So one wheel coin is equal to one kilogram of avoided emissions by choosing a mode of mobility like scooters and bikes and trains instead of a car. So we've issued over 110, about 110,000 wheel coin and about 20,000, so almost 20% have been burned already by users on discounts for green mobility services as well as um, Digital collectibles, which are really fun, like they're celebrating public transit stops all over the world in Kenya and Indonesia and Tokyo. Um, so very excited about where we are now. I guess the last point I'll make about sort of like impact is like in our Discord community, I mean, we have a lot of these, but one just like resonated with me one day. He got hooked on the discounts and on the collectibles and burned all of the wheel coin he had earned. He had like 200 wheel coin he had earned over a few months. And he started burning them on all these things. And he wrote, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to just start riding my bike more because I need to earn more wheel coin so I can burn more on all these things. I'm like, oh, my God, that's exactly the impact we're trying to have. So if you can do that with one user and you can multiply that by 100 and by 1,000 and by a million, well, then you can have an impact at scale. And that's what we're trying to do. Fantastic. Uh, 
Andre, you want to follow up on this one? And then I have one last question. I know we're at time. We might run a few minutes over, but one more question after this. Andre. Thank you, uh, Bundy. So uh, in summary, uh, since we launched uh, Plastics in 2021, we've uh, recovered 1.2 million kilos of uh, plastic, uh, 1,200 tons uh, of plastics in uh, 12 different countries. Um, and uh, we've were, we managed to uh, generate three million dollars in revenue uh, since 2021. Uh, so we are we, we had definitely the uh, uh, I should say the opportunity to deploy uh, Web3 uh, in the most remote areas uh, of the world, uh, where they were just uh, limited to whatever they could pick up, uh, trying to create uh, uh, the impact in terms of waste recovery. Uh, from Brazil to uh, the Nile uh, to the Ganges, uh, everybody's talking silo, everybody's talking silo dollars, everybody's talking Valora, everybody's talking Web3, NFTs. Yeah, I, I, it's just amazing, uh, right? And then the reason is because if you're a waste picker in Nairobi, uh, you now know that you can you, you're going to make money uh, by actually waste picking. Uh, so so for us this this has been the most uh, gratifying uh, initial uh, part of the journey. It's uh, we have a, a commitment to 2050. Uh, perhaps I will not be on this planet when it's uh, we get there. But the point is that at least the the objective is for the company to go beyond. Uh, the lifespan of the founders and to really have an impact. Uh, so this is what is, is driving us. Quite amazing. I love I love the impact focus. Super good job to Thank all you. of you. Really job well done. Uh, you're leading by example for sure. So we are at time, but there's one last question that I want to ask is like, what is the best outcome this Earth Day? And, and how do folks facilitate the Alter Green movement? Uh, Jimmo, go ahead and kick this one off. Yeah, I think in line with Cello's really long-term mission of uh, uh, financializing nature, I think some of those conversations are starting to really take place. I know for sure with a Net Zero Toolkit in Miami, which uh, we're uh, co-leading a, a collabathon, those are certainly the the center of of uh, of, of uh, discussions uh, taking place. So I'm very hopeful that. Uh, it is a uh, really uh, significant uh, point in time where we can look back at this Earth Day and agree that, uh, you know, we're just over, over the, 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 the peak of, of uh, hesitation and things will finally start to, uh, to pick up pace. One just very short analogy, because I, I like analogies, we have officially peaked agriculture land use. And so moving forward, that is a trend that might uh, um, 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 improve. So I'm hoping that that analogy can apply to things like politics and uh, uh, norms and uh, uh, yeah, and just politics around the world. Interesting. Thanks for the call out. Very interesting take. Haley? Yeah, well, I think that um, the the focus on on the collective and then down to the individual is an important one. And I think that a great outcome for this Earth Day is if this is somebody's individual turning point. So kind of Jim, Jim was talking about like at a systems level, but also I, I hope that this is the day that somebody decides, you know what, I'm ready to focus all of my energy on trying to solve this problem. And, and I want to talk to everybody I know about it. And I want this, this is the moment that I really had that realization. You know, we talk, we talk in the refi space about getting green pilled, but I think it's, it's kind of, uh, my hope is that for somebody, this is their, this is their moment where they're, they, they really reach that personal turning point. And you can have whatever motivation you want to, to, to fight the climate crisis. And it can be because you have kids and you're worried about, their future. It can be because you're worried about your own future. It could be because you think it's the right thing to do, or you saw a really beautiful tree one time and that inspired you, whatever it is. Or it could be you listened to a block party on Earth Day. It could be anything. But I think uh, my hope is that for somebody, this is the moment that they 
feel invited in and empowered and like they can really go out there and make a difference in whatever corner of uh, of influence they have in the world. And if enough of us do that, we're, we're in really good shape. So amazing. I love the energy you pack, Haley. You just jump right in there and it, it's so invigorating. Thank you so much for sharing it with all of us. Uh, Andre, follow up. Well, I, I guess on Earth Day, the great request or realization will be turn off the TV. Uh, don't watch the news. Uh, talk to your neighbor. Spend time with your kids. Hug your tree. And uh, when you see some litter on the floor, pick it up. Uh, put it in the right waste bin and go online and, and go on Discord and, and go on CELO community and, and talk to people who care about the planet and then create the nucleus of uh, conscience of conscience. Uh, that is completely impervious to the uh, bombardment of the cataclysmic uh, news that we're exposed to on a daily uh, daily regimen. If you come to that conclusion where you can just turn off the TV on Earth Day, great service to your family and to humanity. Well said. Amazing, amazing advice. Thank you. Boy. <laughs> I have last word. That's scary. Um, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to say things aligned with what you just heard. Um, one is, I think I would love for, for not just one, as Haley said, but like hundreds of thousands or millions of people to like join the revolution and particularly find a refi project you're interested in joining, being in their DAO, participating, contributing, uh, or creating your own. That's, that's the big thing you can do. And a smaller thing you could do is download Wheelcoin and be part of the the Cell Ultra Green Moveathon, which is uh, lasting right now during Earth Day, and it's about making it fun to reduce your emission and join join the community. We have a global goal as Cello and, and Wheelcoin regarding a amount of thousands of kilograms of avoided emission over the three days uh, around Earth Day. So uh, you can play a small part there as well. I love it. I just want to say I'm, I've been waiting for this because I use the emoticon. But I just want to say super good job to all of you. So inspiring. You're inspiring me during this call. I love it. I uh, love it so much. And just absolutely amazing work. Super good job with all your efforts, being an innovator in this space, leading the future of uh, climate focus initiatives. Uh, before we fully disconnect here, uh, you know, boy, you just did a plug. I would love for all of us to go ahead and just take a moment to go ahead and plug uh, your your uh, project and uh, just share a little bit more before we dis disconnect. Uh, Haley, do you want to go ahead and, and plug it and then we'll go to uh, Jimmo and then Andre. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the thing you can do today is go to fallow.io, T-H-A-L-L-O dot I-O, and sign up for our beta so that you can you can be one of the first people to access the platform. And do also follow us on Twitter as well. We're T-H-A-L-L-O underscore I-O. You can find our other social media handles on our website, but we'd love to have folks, more folks in the community. Yeah, you can find out uh, Sylvie at sylvie.earth. Uh, we recently finally started sort of sharing uh, a little bit of, of communication on our work. Uh, you can check that out at Sylvie Protocol on Twitter. We recently published uh, threads that covers app demos and our, our methodology, uh, as well as a Medium article. Uh, and yeah, we are onboarding um, tree stewards. So not limited to our Kenya pilots, but uh, if you'd like to register a uh, uh, plant a tree or follow some of, of the guidelines within our app, uh, we certainly would love for you to, to use the Sylvie app as well. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. Andre? Well, I would say I invite you all to go to plastics.io, uh, look at all the different projects across the uh, planet, and uh, support them by buying a plastic recovery guarantee as uh, humbly as $1.00. Uh, up to whatever one dollar for one kilo recovered, uh, up to whatever amount of kilos of plastics you want to recover in any geography where we're operating. Excellent. Thank you all for joining thank today. You, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for for hosting and moderating. Thank you. Thank Wonderful you. Uh, moderation, Brandy. Indeed. Thank you, Brandy. Appreciate it. Want to say once again, it was such a pleasure to connect with you, and I can't wait to interact with you folks again in the future. Thank you again. Have a great day and a fantastic weekend ahead and a wonderful Earth Day. Really great discussion. And thank you for everyone for just being a part of it. It was really great.
yeah, it was really great to hear how we can activate. Um, love the discussion. Very, very informative. Uh, and now we have one more special message from uh, Kalanthia from Masa. She has a quick update for the community. So give it a listen. Happy Earth Day, Salo community. My name is Kalanthia. I'm a co-founder at Masa Protocol, an identity infrastructure for building Web3 communities. I'm so happy to be here today and I bring exciting news for Celo ecosystem developers. Six weeks ago, in collaboration with the Celo Foundation, we launched Celo Prosperity Passport, the first Sobound token powered Web3 identity passport for the Celo ecosystem. In the past six weeks, we're completely blown away by the enthusiasm from the community. Over 320,000 dot solo soul names have been minted by 45,000 global users, many of them new to the solo ecosystem. Today, we're excited to kick off a developer grant in the amount of 5,000 USDC to inspire the integration of dot solo soul names into your devs and communities. It's really easy. Check out our developer documentations, SCK, CLI, integrate .solo so names into your dApp and communities, and be creative with the use case. Go live with it. We are officially kicking off the competition on 1st of May, so scan the QR code here to join our Discord channel where you can get the TLDR and the latest on the competition. We also linked our announcement blog post in the show notes here, so check it out. Hope to see you here, and thanks again for having me. Bye. Thanks, Kalanthia. That was amazing. Of so glad that uh, you all joined us. And that's a wrap, folks. Thank you so much for joining the Solo Block Party call this time. Uh, Lyle, how are you doing? You doing good? I, you know, I'm great. I, you know, I'm glad everyone stuck with us. Um, yeah. We're already prepared for the next one. Uh, tune in for a demo from the creative crowdfunding protocol and some fun updates uh, maybe around each CC, who knows? Awesome. Well, guys, the show is not over. We have the after party happening right now. After this call, go to twitch.com slash party. Log on right now. We have our DJ, DJ Slim, ready on the Slim. ones and twos. Woo! And also, we're going to be hearing and finding out who the Builder Award winner is. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also giving away some swag. So we tip our hats to you and say adieu. Thank you for joining us. And that's it for us. Peace you out. You all there. Peace out. <laughs>